darling. You are now a father. Boy or girl? Girl! Rats! You horrid! Go on. I am happy to acquaint you, Mr. Darling. You are again a father. Boy or girl? Boy. Mommy, it's hey, not John has me. We don't want any more. Nobody wants me. I do. Mary. What is the matter, George, dear? The matter? This tie. It will not tie. Not around my neck. Oh, no. 
around the bedpost. Oh, yes, 20 times around the bedpost. But not around my neck. No, no. Begs to be excused. Say it again, say And Father? Thank you. Mary, I warn you that if we do, if this tie is not around my neck, we do not go out to dinner. If we do not go out to dinner, I never go to the office again. If I never go to the office again, you and I starve. And our children will have to be thrown out into the street. Let me try, dear. <coughs> yeah. I won't be bathed. You need to think of it. You go and be bathed at once, sir. Mother, when did you get to know me? A little less noise there. Mother, at what time was I born? At two o'clock in the night time, dearest. think it's a mistake to have a dog for a nurse. Oh no, George Nana is a treasure. Yes, I'm sure she is, but I can't help thinking that, well, sometimes she looks on her children as puppies. Oh no, dear one, I'm sure that she knows that they have souls. I wonder, I wonder. George, we must keep Nana. No. I will tell you why. When I came into this room tonight, I saw a face at the window. A face at the window, three floors up. Huh. It was the face of a little boy. He was trying to get in. George, this is not the first time I've seen that boy. Oh? The first time was a week ago. It was Nana's night out, and I had been driving here by the fire. But suddenly I felt a draft as if this window were open. I looked around and I saw that boy in the room. In the room? Just then Nana came back. She at once sprang at him, but it was too late to catch him. The boy left for the window. The boy left for the window. And, and Nana pulled down the sash quickly, but she was too late to catch him. Of course. Wait. The boy escaped, but a shadow had not time to get out. Down came the window and cut it clean off. Mary, why didn't you keep the shadow? I did, George. I rolled it up. And here it is. Well. Nobody I know. It I does look like a scoundrel, though. I think he comes back to get a shadow, George. No doubt. Mary, there's money to be made in this. I will take this to the British Museum first thing in the morning and have it priced. <laughs> George, I have not told you all. I am afraid to. Cowardy? Cowardy, Custer? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Then why not tell all? The boy was not alone that first time. He was accompanied by, oh, I just don't know how to describe it, by a ball of light, not as big as my fist, but it darted about the room like a living thing. And it, it escaped with the boy? Yes. George, what can all this mean? But indeed. What's that, Nana? Ah, of course. Michael, it is your medicine. Won't take it. Be a man, Michael. Won't take it. I'll give you a lovely chocolate to take after it. Oh, don't coddle him, Mary. When I was your age, I took my medicine without a murmur. I said, thank you, kind parents, for giving me bottles that'll make me well. That medicine you sometimes take is much nastier, isn't it? Oh, yes, ever so much nastier. And as an example to you, I'd take some now, if I hadn't forgotten where the bottle is. Oh, oh I know where it is, Father. I'll get it. It really is beastly stuff, Michael. It's that sickly sweet kind. Never mind, Father. It will soon be over. Yeah. Here it is, Father. I've been as quick as I could. 
Yes, you've been ever so precious and quick. Michael, now you see how Father takes it. Michael first. Father first. And not a word out of you. Mike, Father, I thought you took it quite easily, saying thank you, kind parents, for giving me medicine to make me well. That's what you always said. Well, that's not the point. The point is, there's more in his, there's more in mine than in his. It's not fair. Though it were my last breath, I swear it's not fair. Father, I'm waiting. Well, it's all very well to say you're waiting. So am I waiting. I'm not. Father's a cowardly custard. So are you a cowardly custard? I'm not afraid. Well, neither am I afraid. Well, then take it. Well, then you take well, it. Well, why not take it at the same time? All right. All right. Are you ready, Michael? One, two. Take 
big box. This one, but which jaw? Give it. 
to listen to stories. Do you know why swallows build the leaves of houses? It is to listen to stories. Oh, Wendy, your mother was telling such a lovely story. Which story was it? About the prince who couldn't find the lady who wore the glass slipper. Oh, well, that was Cinderella. Oh, Peter, he found her and they lived happy ever after. I'm glad. Oh, well, where are you going? To tell the other boys. Oh, don't go, Peter. I know lots of stories. Oh, the stories I could tell the boys. Come on, we'll fly. Fly? You can fly? Wendy, come with me. Oh, oh dear, I mustn't. Well, think of mother. Besides, I can't fly. I'll teach you. Oh, how lovely to fly. I'll teach you to jump on the wind's back and away we go. Oh, while you're here so sleeping in silly bed, you can be flying like me. Saying funny things to the stars. There are mermaids, Wendy, with long tails. Oh, Wendy, how we should all respect you. Oh, of course, it's awfully fascinating. Would you teach John and Michael to fly, too? If you like. Oh. John, John, wait up! John, there's a boy here who's going to teach us to fly. Slowly. Oh, I've got 
choose rather like Cinderella. Oh, I remember about my mother, said she often said to father, Oh, how I wish I had a checkbook of my own. I don't know what a checkbook is, but I should just love to give my mother one. My mother was fonder of me than your mother of you. Oh, yes, she was. Peter had to make up names for you, but my mother wrote my name in the pinnacle I was lost in. Slightly soiled, that's what it is.
shake his hand with this. Oh, I'm terrible. Yeah, I've offered. Yeah, I've offered it. You say you hope the worst is gone, him. For common hand, in other homely uses. If I was a mother, I would pray to have my children born with this instead of that. Smee was plant pan flung my arm to a crocodile that happened to be passing by. I'm often known as the strange drink. Not of crocodiles, but of that one crocodile. The brute lay my arm so much, like my arm so much to me that he's followed me ever since, from sea to sea, from land to land, licking his lips for the rest of me. In a way, it's sort of a compliment. I want no such compliments. I want Peter Pan, who first gave the brute his taste for me. Smee, that crocodile would have me before now, but by a lucky chance he swallowed the clock and it goes tick, tick, tick tick inside him. And so before he can reach me, I hear the tick and bolt. Once I heard it strike six within him. Yeah, but soon the clock will run down and then get you. Aye, that is the fear that haunts me.
Someone's got to read the uh, Wendy for me. Oh,
is true. true, Nana. It is true. We did fly. And here is Peter. Peter, is this the place? Yes. Where's Wendy, John? She is asleep. John, let her, let us wake her up. Get her, her to make supper for her. Please, sir, a lady lies very ill. Where does she lie? In yonder place. I will put this glass thing in her mouth. How is she? It has cured her. I'm glad. I think it is finished. There is no locker on the door. There is no chimney. We must have a chimney. It certainly has to have a chimney. Oh, look your best. The first impression is very important. Where am I? We, Wendy lady, we have built this house for you. Oh, say you are pleased. Lovely to our own house. And we are your children. Oh? Wendy lady, be our mother. Ought I? Of course, it's frightfully fascinating. You see, I'm only a little girl. I have no real experience. That doesn't matter. All we need is just a nice motherly person. Oh, dear, I feel that is just exactly what I am. It is, it is. We saw it at once. Well then, I'll do my best. Come inside at once, you naughty children. I'm sure your feet are damp. And before I put you to bed, I have just time to finish the story of Cinderella. Prince found the girl with the golden slipper and it turned out to be Cinderella and they lived happily ever, ever after. <sighs>
not in the wrong with me. Not so rough as me. Roughish, but not so rough. Is it Captain's orders? Poor Tiger Lily. What was that? Ahoy there, you lovers! It's the Captain. Must be someone out to us. They put the red skin on the rock.
consider the feelings of these unhappy parents with all their children blown away. It's awfully sad. Oh, yes. Think of those empty beds. But our heroine knew that her mother would leave the window open for her children to fly back. So they stayed away for years and had a lovely time. Did they ever go back? Hmm. Well, now, let us take a peep into the future. Years have rolled by. And who is this elegant lady of uncertain age alighting at Charlottetown Station? Can it be? Yes. No. Yes, it is the fair Wendy. I am glad. And who are the two noble portly figures accompanying her? Can they be John and Michael? They are. See, dear brother, said Wendy, pointing upward. There is the window standing open. So up they flew to their loving parents. And pen cannot inscribe the happy scene over which we draw a veil. Oh, what is wrong, Peter? Where is it? It's not that kind of pain, Wendy. I thought like you about the window. So I stayed away for moons and moons, and then I flew back. But the window was barred, for my mother had forgotten all about me. And there was another little boy sleeping in my bed. Wendy. Let us go back. Are you sure mothers are like that? Yes. Oh, John! Michael! You're not going to leave us, Wendy. Well, I must! Not tonight! Uh, well, at once. Perhaps mother's in half mourning by this time. Peter, will you make the necessary arrangements? If you wish it. We won't let you go. Toodles! I appeal to you. I'm just told that nobody minds me. But the first who does not behave to any out of blood wins severely. <laughs> I have told the braves to guide you through the woods, that fly and pass yourself. Then Tinkerbell will take you across the sea. Tink, you are to get up and take Wendy on a journey. She says she won't. Tink, if you don't get up and dress at once. She's getting up. Dear one. Well, if you will all come with me, I feel almost sure I can get my mother and father to adopt you. Well, won't they think it would rather a handful? Oh, no. It would only mean having a few beds in the drawing room. Why, they can be hidden behind screens on first Thursdays. Peter, there we go. All right. Well, get your clothes, Peter. changing your flannels, won't you, Peter? 
places with his dog. Out of remorse, Lisa. I'm a married woman myself, and I don't think it's respectable to go to his office in a kennel. There, that is the cat catching him back. Who would you take that man? <laughs> Lots of little boys. Several adults. What sort of day have you had, George? Oh, wonderful. There were never less than a hundred running around the cab and waving. And you know, when we went past the stock exchange, all of the members came out and waved. I am so <laughs> glad, George. I'm going to be put on a postage stamp. Never. Oh, yes, and we would never have had all of this luck if the children hadn't flown away. George, I'm sure you're not enjoying it. Enjoying it? Never. Look at me. I'm living in a kennel. Oh, forgive me, dear one. No, it's not you who needs forgiveness. It's me. Always me. Would you turn on the radio so I can go to sleep? And shut that window, there's a draft. It's father! So 
so it is. Let me see, Father. It's very careless of Mother not to be here when we come back. Shh. That's her over there. Who is that lady? It's Mother. I wasn't really your mother when we were away. That's her. Let us sneak up and put our hands over her eyes. No, let us break it to her gently. children whom I'll see no more. Mother. That is Wendy. Mother. Now it is Mother. John. Mother. Now Michael. And when they call, I stretch out my arms to them, but they will never come, never come. Mother. Mother.
Because what happens when you do that is then you distract the audience. Instead of them watching the scene, they're watching what's going on in the wings. Okay, so we don't want that. All right. Um, I want to see the um, Lost Boys. That's all I'm going to say right now. The Lost Boys stay up and the house builders stay up. Okay? Everybody else doubts it. Everyone go quiet because then they'll hear that too. And it's really, really inconsiderate of anyone who's downstairs, of the people who are upstairs trying to put on a show. Okay? Now please, I beg of you all, be quiet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nasty voice number 450.